Hi, folks. Um, I just want to say something about the uh, prelude. Um, there is a Muscogee Cree Indian, Jim Pepper, and he wrote uh, the prelude, which is called Wichi Taito, and the words are water spirit singing round my head makes me feel glad that I'm not dead. I'm sure we can all share that sentiment this morning, am I right? I'm kind of doing a couple of things here today. Uh, Melissa's not with us, so she's going up to Saratoga to see the X-Files Museum. So let me say, welcome. Whoever you are, whatever you believe, however you identify, you are welcome here. We are a community, not despite these things, but because of them, because of you. We come together in this, our church, which sits on the Haudenosaunee ancestral lands. Haudenosaunee are people who build a house. Welcome to our house. We start with a couple of announcements. Why look, it's Ken Drake. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Jeff asked me earlier this morning if I was going to make an announcement every week, and I said, I, I, I hope so. And if it's not me up here, I hope it's a member of the uh, Democracy Action Team, the Expository Writing Team, the Climate Action Team, or the... I am. Did Jeff turn it on? <laughs> what? Is that better? Yeah, just speak up. All right, I'm Ken Drake. Earlier, Jeff and I were speaking, and he said, am I going to have, uh, have announcements every Sunday? And I said, yes, I probably will. And if it's not me up here, it'll be a member of the Democracy Action Team, the uh, uh, Racial Justice Team, the Inclusion Team, the Climate Action Team, or any other team we can think of. Some of them are task force, so it doesn't matter what the title is. But what we're trying to do here at UU Utica is to get more involved in a variety of ways and things are starting to happen. We have some new members that have come forward and signed on to some of our projects. Long-term members have done so. So it's really exciting time, I think. And um, at this point in my life, I'm looking for someone younger to uh, kind of take up the, the mantle, if you will, because uh, you know we, some of the old guard here has been doing this for a number of years and it's time that we kind of spread the love around. Two announcements. A number of years ago, the then Social uh, Action Committee provided members with paper envelopes, stamps, stamps, and a list of elected officials as part of an initiative called Letters of Moral Conscience. The Democracy Action Team wants to bring this uh, effort back as part of our expository writing team effort so you can let elected officials know where we stand, where you stand on issues of importance. Uh, the second announcement it pertains to the petition that we have been discussing and, and uh, formulating uh, in regards to the Kirkland Solar Farm project. There's uh, 
uh, project in the uh, town of Kirkland where they are um, uh, advancing the idea of cutting down 60 acres of mature forest in order to build a solar farm. And it's not a, a very appropriate site for many reasons. And that petition is now available uh, thanks to the climate action team's approval of it last week. And over here we have our climate change uh, and resolution to act uh, document that we had uh, back in 20, I don't know, 17 or so, six, 2016 that, you, uh, that we've had up on the wall. We're gonna send along a copy of that with a petition to the town board, uh, planning board to uh, tell them where we stand in opposition to that. Uh, both of those things are in the room across from the hallway. All right, that's where I'll be after uh, the uh, service. So if you wanna talk more about it, that's where I'll be. All right, thank you, Jeff. Deb, come on up. Hello, folks. I'm Deborah Hagenbuch. Speak right up, Deb. Hello, I'm Deborah Hagenbuch. On April 28th, after service, we will hold about a 30 minute, what we're calling peer to peer orientation. And it's for visitors and new members who'd like to get together with some of us older members and just talk about Unitarian Universalism, guidelines, principles, general questions, um, questions about this particular congregation. Um, please feel free to be in touch with me if you have any further questions, and please join us on the 28th if you have interest. Thank you, Deb. Thank you, Ken. Hey, Zoom folks, Diane, Doreen, Chris, you can hear us okay? You can see us okay. Great to hear and see. Thank you. Coffee hour as usual will follow the service. Please stay. Our call to worship is from Chief Warren Lyons, the Onondaga Nation faith keeper, who said in his address to the NGOs of the United Nations, I do not see a delegation for the four-footed. I see no seat for the eagles. We forget and we consider ourselves superior but we are, after all, a mere part of the creation, and we must consider to understand where we are. And we stand somewhere between the mountain and the ant, somewhere and only there, as a part and parcel of the creation. Uh, Ken, do you want to help with the uh, chalice lighting? We light our chalice each week with different words. This week's words are from a former UUA president, Susan Frederick Gray, who said, it is essential that we find ways to breathe life into that which reminds us of our power, our humanity, our compassion, and our interdependence. In, I believe it was November of 2022, uh, we had Chris Thomas here for the first time. Uh, Chris came with Ron Patterson from the Oneida Nation. And pretty much as soon as Chris uh, was here, people said, when can we have Chris back? Uh, we were gonna have him on uh, Indigenous Peoples Day, the day that Columbus did not discover America, but uh, Chris was at the uh, Brooklyn Children's Museum, right? Uh, Chris travels throughout the Northeast, uh, performing and teaching about native culture. And Chris is here today with his daughter, Sona. We are um, a little bit different. Uh, instead of the hymns, uh, we're gonna have Chris just go on a little bit longer. Hope that's okay with everybody. And uh, right at this time, we're gonna ask Chris to uh, come right up.
Hello, everyone. You guys can hear me okay? Yes, all right. Well, like Jeff said, uh, my name is, for those that don't know me, uh, my name is Chris Thomas, and I come from the Onondaga Nation near Syracuse, New York. And uh, we got a little jet lag here. We, uh, we got up real early. We were in uh, Catskill Mountains. Um, we performed there yesterday, but we are here today to be with you guys. And um, so um, we got, I got invited to demonstrate some Haudenosaunee or Iroquois social dancing and uh, just um, to educate you guys a little bit for people that don't know some. And uh, we're going to do what we can here. And uh, we got about 15 minutes. But I have my daughter here to help me. Um, she travels with me to do these um, um, performances all over the United States and Canada. Um, so that being said, um, in our culture, women um, pretty much run the show. They, uh, they um, choose our chiefs, our title holders. So yeah, so that we said they have their own special dance. Um, and uh, we call it Escanye, which uh, means uh, it's a women's shuffle dance. And um, when our women do this dance, you notice their feet, they're shuffling against the ground, and that represents them massaging the back of our mother to earth. So right now, I'm going to have my um, daughter demonstrate this for you guys, and then um, we're going to move on from there. So this is her women's dance. <coughs> Okay, um, any ladies think they want to try that? Anybody? No? No? It's okay if not. Excuse me? Oh, Oksana Thomas. Yeah. Okay, um, you know what? We'll give her um, one more song for the, for the Zoom. I forgot about the Zoom people. <laughs> okay, we'll give her one more. One more. Oh, 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 look for those bare necessities. 
necessities, those simple bare necessities. Forget about your worries and your tribe. I need those bare necessities, those mother nature recipes, and bring those bare necessities to life. Yo, ha, yo, ha, yo, ha, Okay, um, I just want to explain a little bit on our songs. Um, our songs, um, there's certain ones that do have meaning and language in them, but um, some of them, um, a lot of them are old chants passed down. But uh, that one, if you notice, has uh, English in there. So um, certain part of the year, um, all of our nations come to one reservation to um, share these women's dance songs. And uh, people make them up, or people sing from old, old, old songs that are passed down. But again, um, we we join together to sing these women's dance songs from the morning until the evening, and then we have a big social dance with different kinds of dancing going on. And um, some people make up their own songs, so I just thought, uh, I don't know, that one just popped in my head. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's for the kids. I've seen another little one here, but. Uh, we're gonna keep it uh, moving here. We got a little bit of time, and uh, this next one is um, a really easy dance. If you can walk, you can do this dance, and then it is called a stomp dance. And um, the stomp dance, otherwise known as a standing quiver dance, and um, our men would take their quiver of, of arrows and set them in the center of the village to um, bless our um, bless them on our journey or whatever we're going out to do, and. Um, it's like an answering and calling back so the men would sing these songs there would be a leader um, and then the, the rest of the men would answer to these songs but uh, we're gonna um, I'm gonna sing on sing one to just to demonstrate it and uh, if you guys like we encourage you guys to come up and join on this um, stomp dance it's very easy Um, oh, Jeff, I was gonna. Do I have to use the mic for this one, Jeff? Yeah. You, you, okay, for everything. All right. So you want to lead it? Just go on the. Just go on the. Okay. Right. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> And that's all there is to it. So come on up. Don't be shy. Follow our dancers behind. Yep, that's all there is to it. <clears throat> yep, follow our dancers. Yep, yep. Get right behind her. Follow the leader. <clears throat> One more, one more, one more, one more. Yo ho ha 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 yo 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 yo 
Good job, you guys. Very good, getting that blood pumping this morning. All right. Thank you for those that joined. You guys are now part native. No, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, so we got a uh, couple more minutes here. Um, okay, in our... Um, culture we have what is uh, something fairly new calling it's called smoke dancing and it's a, a freestyle type of dance it's uh, fast uh, energetic the songs are short but they are fast and uh, where this smoke dance came from um, it derived from our war dance which only the men did at that time um, to psych themselves up before war or a celebration after war so how they dance, each individual dances their own style into this. So they tell their own story in this war dance and um, maybe they're looking for tracks of an enemy or, or yeah, whatever. But uh, so only a men that did this dance, this war dance. And uh, over time, the singers sped up the pace of the drum, start calling it smoke dancing on account of the men's feet moving so fast, kicking up all the dust and dirt. So, and um, the women seen this fast um, type of dancing, and uh, I think it was like the early 60s. Um, they seen this um, fast type of dancing the men were doing, and they decided they can dance just as fast as the guys, or even yet better. So to this day, women do smoke dancing. And uh, this is a contest, um, like I said, it's a contest um, um, dance. And um, so people travel all over the United States and Canada to compete in the smoke dancing. There's judges involved, there's money involved. So for the weekend, we're not friends. <laughs> no, no, no it, it, it really is a, just a, um, a friendly competition. We dance because we love it and it's, it's medicine to us and it's exercise. <laughs> so we really enjoy it and uh, the money is a bonus. But uh, with that being said, we're gonna have um, um, Oksana Come on out and demonstrate her version of smoke dance. <clears throat> and, uh, watch out, but you didn't stand on the side a little bit? Or oh, you can dance around here, huh? Okay. All right, she's good. She's good. <clears throat> Anybody think they can do that? Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, um, this little one, give me a, um, an example I can make out of her. But uh, with our young ones, um, we don't force them to dance or learn our ways. Or, um, we just encourage it, encourage it to them, and uh, hopefully they pick it up. 
Yeah, it's not like, you know, you got to sit at the table and you can't get up until you're done. <laughs> but uh, that's how that works with our children. So sometimes they dance and sometimes they don't. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we just uh, keep it around them and hopefully they pick it up. So uh, I don't know. Do we got time for one more? You want to have her do one more smoke dance here for you guys? All right, one more. Huh? Oh, OK. OK, so on these. Uh, she wants a half and half. So what's that? What that means is, she wants a um, a half women's dance song, and it goes right into a smoke dance. So with the men, that's um, half war dance. So it'd be slow, and then the second half is fast smoke dance. That's with the men. But for the women, they get a women's dance and then a smoke dance. <clears throat> All right, that uh, concludes our first uh, portion of our segment. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you soon. Yes. Yep. Guess I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> and if I could ask you, Chris, could you say a little bit about the significance of music and dance in Native American culture and spirituality? Yeah, um, well, these um, songs I'm sharing with you guys are what we call our earth songs, our social dancing. And um, we do them inside and outside our, of our longhouses and uh, to keep, our, uh, keep ourselves entertained. And, um, and uh, yeah, and we do them and uh, they do have uh, like meaning and why we do them. But uh, really, it's, um, it's okay to share with a public setting like this. But they're really basically to uplift our spirits, and we have a good time doing it. We um, so they're social dances songs, so we're socializing with one another, so smiling, laughing. So and then we even do them at uh, we did a birthday party, my niece's birthday party, and we made it into um, musical chairs. <laughs> so but I was but we were singing our songs, you know, and so yeah, we we have fun with it. We have fun with it. So that's basically what uh yeah what are these social dances are why we do them. And um, our ceremonial stuff, we do behind closed doors in our longhouses. But yeah, they're um, basically just to entertain us and uh, yeah, keep our spirits lifted. And um, yeah, just like um, any, any singers, like just out of the blue would just start singing. Just things pop up in your head, so there's certain songs. But uh, yeah, that's um, why we do them, yeah. Does anyone have questions? Yeah, any questions? Yes. No, no, oh no, I knew that. I knew it, but I mean. Mm -hmm. Oh no, no, I've sang that before. It's just like there's certain songs that just come, that come up and I've seen this. So that's what reminded me of it. <laughs> so yeah, but yeah, yeah. Dave. Yeah. Can you speak briefly on the historical significance of the indigenous culture in the uh, solar eclipse? Um, I don't, I, I, you know what, I can't do that right now. My, uh, I have a buddy that's uh, more educated in, into that, but he's not with us here today. But yeah, but yeah, that's, um, people have different beliefs with that, you know, and different um, tribes believe different than we do with that too, also. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not too, yeah. But, but I was at an event for that, and uh, it was like a more of a ceremonial thing for them, for us. So, but yeah, but I was there to provide the singing, the ceremony song, but yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Anyone else? Yes. Can I bring you the mic? Oh, here comes Jeff. <laughs> oh. 
I was just curious what uh, what the population of the Onondaga community is and the native community around this area. Um, you know what? I really don't know the population. I mean, we're not that big. Um, I'm, I, I, I want to say, geez, I don't know, maybe uh, 4,000, maybe 3,000, something like that. Yeah, yeah. We're not one of the, it's not, we're not the biggest res, but we're the main, main reservation that started everything. We're the fire keepers in the middle. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's not that big, but I mean, I should probably know that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yes, good question though. Yeah. Any other? Yep. My name's Marlene. I just had a question about intertribal marriages and the courtship dances that go along with that and whether they're different from tribal or clan marriages? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, well, in our culture and what we believe and how we do that, we, there is marriages, um, they're not arranged marriages, but when a couple gets married our way, they get married in our longhouse. And uh, we say that's for how it's supposed to be for that's your partner for life. And uh, yeah, so um, how we do that too. And uh, the first dance they do is uh, called a rabbit dance. They hold hands and there's a certain type of way that you do it. But, um, and we do, and we also have that as a social dance too. So like when they, we do it in a public setting, it doesn't mean that you're gonna fall in love and all that. But I mean, that is the first dance that we do as a married couple. And um, in our, um, um, we have a, there are our clans. So one, like I'm beaver clan, I wouldn't be with another person that is the same clan. It's cause we consider that family, can family. So it would be somebody from a different clan, yeah. And um, we have nine clans, yeah. And uh, each different um, nation is different. Some people only have three clans, six clans, but yeah, but yeah. But th that's how that works. Yeah, not the same clan when you're with somebody. Yes. So then if you marry somebody from a different clan, then what are your children? Whatever the mother is. Oh, okay. Yeah, major color call, yeah. You mentioned the fire keeper, what is that? Um, well, we're the central fire, we're, yeah, of the, our confederacy, yeah, so we're the ones that get, they're basically saying that we got it started, we got started and then and, and, um, and joined other nations, Oneida, Senecas, Mohawks, Cayugas, Tuscaroras, yeah, so we're the center, we're the fire keepers, we keep the fire going, as long as that fire is going, we're good, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I'd like to ask about the symbol that's on our bulletin. Oh, yeah. I've seen yep. it across the, the highway. I've seen it in all different places. And yep, I. Yep, that's the <laughs> most recognized symbol in our Confederacy, Haudenosaunee people. It's uh, yep, the, yep, the Hiawatha Bell. And uh, that tree in the middle is us, Onondaga Nation. And uh, at the far left is the Mohawks. And then it gets, I think it's the, I want to say Cayugas. And then we're in the middle, and then there's, uh, I said Mohawk, right? Far to the left? Yeah. Yep, and then, then Tuscarora and Senecas. Senecas are the Western doorkeeper. But yeah, and then um, that's five, it started with five. And then uh, from North Carolina, that's where the Tuscaroras came from, is from down south. And then they joined, they were last to join our Confederacy. And um, those, the symbols on the outside, did you see the little off the, off the square? Is it on? I don't know if it's on there. It's not on there? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's oh, it's that little, yeah. The little, little slip. Yeah, right there. That's, that's very important. Because so that's safe. That's important on the edge there. So, because that's uh, inviting. So, if we get any more new, so that, so they can be added on. Yeah, so I, I, I kind of like, when I see that symbol, I make sure that I see those on the end. Because otherwise, if it's flat, and then it means like there's nobody, nobody coming. So, nobody. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Chris yes. will be back with us in a few minutes. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Alexander. Hey, Jack. Would you do the offer the uh, collection at the appropriate time? Thank you. And that'll be that'll be when I'm done. Uh, with the offering part. Uh, once again, for our friends on Zoom, I'm Jeff Chard. I'm a member of the worship team 
end with the stewardship team. Uh, there are other uh, teams, committees that I would like to get involved in. You, you, you can't, can't do everything, and that's okay. Uh, there are other people here who uh, carry forward our social justice initiatives, and uh, that is one of the big reasons that I support this church, uh, both with my efforts and financially. Um, it is our stewardship, our donations, that make possible the work that this church does for the community that is here today, for our dear friends on Zoom, and throughout the community. You may have heard we have a stewardship drive going on. <laughs> and uh, we're real close to wrapping that up. Uh, we would really like to wrap that up with, uh, with a fantastic achievement. Um, we are at $86,245 right now. That's the good news. That's a really good figure, uh, especially because uh, we started uh, $8,000 down uh, due to the deaths and the illness from last year. So um, the uh, 62 people who have pledged have uh, come forth with a remarkable figure of 86,000. If we could get to uh, 90,000, uh, Jack and Paul and Barb would dance for you, I think. Uh, <laughs> I, I can't say I cleared that in advance, but uh, I'll bet they would. Uh, all of that is the good news, the great news. Uh, however, we only have about seven people who haven't pledged, and we have another $3,500 to go. Um, However, we also just accept outright gifts. <laughs> or, as, uh, as my daughter Steph said a couple of weeks ago, if uh, anything that you've ever seen here uh, or, or your circumstances have improved and uh, you might want to rethink uh, any donation that you gave, uh, we really want to get there. There are, you know, some people here and some people in the community, and we want to do good things. We want to do great things, and uh, we don't need to worry about paying the bills. We just want to do those good things. So, thank you so much, uh, sure. Jeff, sure. Paul. All right, Bruce, Tammy, uh, Paul said if we don't make, if we do make the goal, he won't dance. But, uh, all right. I just want to say, I'm going to increase my pledge 20% now. Tell me how I can do that so I can see them dance. <laughs> <laughs> I have that opportunity if they want to do that. You can see Jack today. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. All all right, Jack, uh, why don't you go ahead and, uh... <laughs> great. And if you can get a count, too, sometime today, Jack. Got a very nice turnout. I'll play a song.
John Hall wrote that song. He's in the band Orleans, and that song is Sales. Did I forget anything yet? I guess we're doing okay. All right. Um, let's have Chris come up again. And uh, there's Chris and Oksana. I was just here. <laughs> um, okay. Um, all right. So, uh, in our culture and other other uh, nations and tribes, have we all have a round dance? And people do it different in their own ways and go a certain way. The way we go in our circle is counterclockwise. We believe the other way is for um, ceremonial purposes or the, for the people that passed on. So that's why we go counterclockwise. But out west, they go clockwise and they have their own different, um, their own beliefs and why they go that way. So with that being said, I'm gonna have um, Oksana out here. And again, invite you guys in. This is a uh, shorter segment here. So if you guys wanna dance, come on up and I will teach you this dance. It's very easy. It's almost like the hokey pokey. <laughs> One, your right foot in, take it out, shake it about. But if you want to line up behind her and uh, develop a circle, and uh, I will uh, explain this um, dance and how it's done. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So we're going to, all right, well, whatever we have here. Yep. And don't get, then we'd be aware of this when you guys go by. Nobody getting hurt. But uh, okay, we're gonna put our right foot in, in the circle, take it out, put it back in, shake it about. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you don't have to do that. <laughs> but uh, that's basically it. That's basically it. And at the same time, we're gonna be moving to the, to the right. And then in a certain part of the song, um, I will announce it and then we're gonna stop and switch feet to the left. So then the circle will go the other way. All right. So we're going to go follow Oksana's lead to the beat. Round dance. Say, say where you are, but that's all there is to it. So the people that were scared to come up at first, you see what, how it's done? Come on up, don't be shy. Sana, make the circle a little bit wider when you go. When you go, when you start up, okay? Yeah, go use the whole floor. Okay, and anybody that doesn't wanna um, dance, I, need, uh, I was wondering if any two guy. it doesn't matter, a guy or a girl can uh, help me rattle. I got these, I have two horn rattles. Anybody would like to come? Yes. Feel free. First come, first serve. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. So how this, uh, we're going to do this. Yeah. You can stand right next to each other. Yeah. All right. And the people with the rattles are going to hit their hand with it the same time as the drum. So, yeah, we're going to stay on beat. All right. Here we go. Yes, I trust you. <laughs> Oh, 
guys have a seat thank you very good good job very good very good you guys surprised me <laughs> all right um i think we have time now we're gonna put oksana to work again <laughs> all right let's give her another uh half and half actually we'll give her a full woman's dance song and one smoke dance that should be good All right, I'm going to have her uh, do her version of uh, this women's dance. Okay, so that song did have some words in it, and uh, it's basically saying um, how um, people make good music on the radio and everybody likes that, that we can make music just as good, too. It's, so it's basically saying that, yeah. All right, so I don't know if I mentioned last time about the smoke dancing. So... Um, so it's kind of like a contest between the singer and the dancer as well. So the dancer has to know the songs. And um, if there's a, um, a jump in the song um, or a skip, they have to show that in their dancing when they're being judged. And uh, it's judged on their regalia and uh, how they dance. And um, if they have, to, yeah, they have to show those jumps or skips in the song in their dancing and stop at the last beat of the drum. So that's how that's um, judged. So. Uh, we're gonna see if we can uh, stump her and uh, trick her here a little bit. <clears throat> <clears throat>
it for that smoke to have. All right. All right. She doesn't have to go to bed early tonight. <laughs> All right. I hope you guys enjoyed the dancing as much as we enjoyed dancing for you. Thank you.